Good morning ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my new video. And in today's video I'm going to be talking about the 10 reasons why Russia had gone into Ukraine. And before I start, I just want to let you know that I'm not a pro-war person. Uh, I don't like civilians getting killed. I don't like war. Uh, I don't like the fact that there's people dying and there's millions of refugees. My thoughts are with the victims and with their families. And this presentation is just given the reasons why Russia had gone in to Ukraine, trying to understand the Russian point of view. I'm going to start the show now. And just don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Do what you can to support the channel. If you do like the video content and the presentation, don't forget to buy me a coffee or you can join my Patreon if you really, really love this channel. So the number one reason Russia had to go into Ukraine is because east of Ukraine you have two areas called Donetsk and Luhansk. So basically there has been um, a war going on between the these breakaway regions and between Kiev and 14,000 Donetsk people have been killed in, in these breakaway provinces. So recently Russia has recognized these breakaway provinces and a lot of these people that live in these areas are Russian speaking. So Putin has taken it uh, very very personally that a lot of these people getting killed are Russian people. Uh, a lot of them have Russian passports. So Russia feels like it's got to go in to protect its own people and this is one of the main reasons why uh, Russia feels they had to go in. So like I said 14,000 people have died since the start of the conflict and Russia basically said enough is enough we need to go in because this seems to be mass genocide and they cannot stand back any longer. There was two Minsk agreements in place over the years both times Kiev has ignored them uh, it's done nothing to um, go along with these Minsk agreements and Russia believes they have been more than patient enough uh, they tried to push uh, Kiev to validating these Minsk agreements and nothing's happened and Russia feels they have no choice and they have run out of options and they have run out of patience as well and that's one of the reasons they've gone in so you can compare this to what happened in Georgia about 14 years ago and similar things happened there was breakaway regions which which russia had supported and uh, and georgia had uh, a civil war going on with those breakaway regions and russia went in to protect those people in the breakaway regions it was a very very short war i believe it took about 14 days but then again georgia is a very small country and at the time georgia also wanted to join nato and russia had put a stop to that as you can see, Ukraine is a much larger country. It's the largest country in Europe. And Russia is going to take a lot longer with this military goals as there is a lot more land to cover. So this is why this war is going to take a lot longer than people imagined. Russia feels it's the victim of double standards because what Russia is doing is very similar to what happened in Yugoslavia. Uh, Yugoslavia, there was false allegations made about Yugoslavia doing genocide. And NATO went in Yugoslavia, bombed it, split the country up. They also protected Kosovo as well as a breakaway region. And it's very similar to what's happening in Ukraine right now with um, Russia going in to help the people of Donetsk. So you can understand why Russia thinks there's a lot of double standards going on. And at the time when Russia had a war with Georgia... America and its allies were busy in the Middle East fighting wars in the Middle East so they did not focus much on Georgia at the time and that's why there wasn't much news coverage of Georgia as well. However right now US and its allies are not involved in any wars so they have Ukraine's full attention so this is why this it is all over the news every single day covered by every single major paper western paper and this is why the West has given Russia maximum sanctions. So some people may say, why does the US and the West support breakaway regions in some countries and not in others? For example, why does it support a breakaway region in Taiwan, for example, 
Uh, Taiwan is a runaway province of China. And why does it support Taiwan independence? Why does it support uh, Xinjiang independence as well, away from China? So you see, it's a lot to do with geopolitics. Uh, if the US is your friend, uh, they will support you, whether you're doing any genocide, it does not really matter to them. But if you're an enemy of the Americans or if you're an enemy of the West, they will come down hard on issues like this. So number two is NATO. It's very clear that Ukraine wanted to join NATO and NATO had been reluctant to get U uh, Ukraine on board. And the US had been quite reluctant as well. Even though the US and NATO had promised uh, Ukraine there would be NATO membership in the future. Um, they have been dragging their heels. Uh, Russia has been completely against it. And Russia wanted some guarantees from NATO that Ukraine will not join NATO in the future. Uh, NATO would not give any such guarantees. Neither would the US. And that's all they had to say because um, Russia's biggest concerns is, is its security it's actually scared of NATO because NATO says it's a defensive organization but it's not it's attacked Yugoslavia in the past it's attacked Libya it's bombed Libya killed its leader Gaddafi so you wouldn't call that a defensive approach that, that is an attacking offensive organization not only that, NATO was involved in the Middle East and also recently NATO is threatening China and is talking about expanding towards China as well. So China is starting to feel threatened by NATO as well. So it seems like a very offensive organization to me. And Russia has got the same um, security concerns regarding NATO. It does not want nuclear weapons right on Russia's doorsteps. Again, if there was uh, nuclear weapons on Americans' doorsteps, like in Cuba, for example, you've seen how America reacts with the, um, I don't know if anyone remembers the Cuban missile um, crisis. So it's a very similar thing. Um, Russia does not want missiles right on its border. And Russia has genuine security concerns. And NATO was not listening to Russia. Even though NATO promised Russia that they would not expand um they've they have already expanded i still think this war could have been avoided if nato had refused ukraine's application to nato that's all nato had to do was to say to ukraine sorry you, you can never join nato it's out of the question listen to russia's um security concerns and just tell russia okay we're happy not to go right onto your borders so we're not going to get Ukraine on board. So if you're happy with that, you know, please don't invade Ukraine. Um, Russia would have been happy with that. And this war could have been averted there and then. Number three, oil, gas and pipelines. So there's quite a few gas pipelines going through Ukraine and going straight into Europe. And this has been there from the Soviet times. And as soon as Ukraine broke up from the Soviet Union... 80% of the gas that was flowing through to Europe was going through Ukraine and Ukraine was charging billions to Russia and not only that Ukraine was also siphoning off a lot of these gas for themselves as well and uh, Russia was not very happy with that obviously that's not reason for Russia to invade so what they found is 2 trillion cubic meters of natural gas alongside Crimea and right along the coast near Odessa and they've also found shale gas around Donetsk and Lugansk areas as well so this is one of the main reasons why you know it's important that Russia protects uh, Donetsk and Lugansk as well because there's shale gas in those areas and also one of the reasons why Russia took back Crimea was because of the two trillion cubic meters of gas found along the Black Sea and alongside Odessa around that sea. So Russia wanted to claim all of that. There was so much gas found alongside those uh, Black Sea uh, deposits that it was rated 14th in the world in terms of natural gas reserves. So it's a lot, 14th in the world. Ukraine then allowed Shell and Exxon to come in and before they could do anything, uh, Russia took back Crimea 
and uh, Shell and Exxon had no choice but to exit because um, they were right alongside um, the Crimean coast. So you might say to yourself, hang on a second, that's a bit greedy, isn't it? Russia going in because of the oil. It's always been about the oil. Well, it's not just that. It's a lot more complicated. So I guess Russia didn't want Ukraine to have the oil because Russia thought that if Ukraine had all of that oil, Ukraine would have been rich. They would have spent it all on weapons. They would use those weapons to kill more people in Donetsk. And they would use those weapons to you know be stronger and in the future you know Ukraine if it joined NATO Ukraine would have been a much more powerful country with more weapons and it would be much more richer plus with the backing of NATO Russia would have had a lot difficult time uh, fighting Ukraine in the future so they thought best time to do it is now and best time to take those gas fields is now before Ukraine does so that is one of the main reasons why they had to go in. Number four, support Crimea. So Crimea was pretty much isolated on its own. Um, it didn't have direct land access to Russia. So the only access to Crimea was along the sea. And there was also a bridge as well, which Russia spent billions building this bridge um, across to Crimea. So the bridge is around here, as you can see with the blue uh, mark I've put in. There. So they spent, spent billions of building this bridge. However, there were still more issues. One of their main ports, Russian ports, is called Sevastopol. And it's based around here where Russia's main navy is. Navy is. And also they use this port to transport oil, gas, uh, materials to the rest of the world. And so this port is very, very important to Russia and they need this port and they need more transport links coming into Crimea, kind of transport goods back and forth. So Crimea was very, very isolated. And in the future, if there is a possible war with NATO, NATO would easily take it back. So what Russia wanted is to have more security guarantees and more protection for Crimea. So right now, if Russia takes all of east of Ukraine and south of Ukraine, there will be links going directly into Russia from Crimea. And it will be much easier to support Crimea from different uh, different regions so so this is one of the main reasons why um, they had to go just to support Crimea because Crimea is a very very important port city for Russia It's one of the few ports they have which is not iced rest of Russia's ports are very much uh, icy uh, or cannot be used uh, this so this is definitely one of the main ports where most of, of Russia's trade goes through so you see, Crimea is very important to Russia in terms of trade, in terms of logistics, in terms of security. And for all those reasons, it's very important that they link Crimea to the rest of Russia. And they need to make sure it's not isolated. They can secure it because it is one of their main trading hubs and trading ports as well as military hubs as well. Number five, water. So one of the other reasons uh, they had to go in was because there was a huge water shortage in Crimea. So when they took over Crimea, there was um, a river going along uh, from this area in straight into Crimea. So what um, the Ukrainians had did was they blocked off this river. So there was no water going into Crimea. So uh, all the Crimean residents were very, very thirsty. There was a lack of water. So Russia had to spend billions in transporting water um, every single day into Crimea to make the people happy. Um, so that was a big, big issue. So what they've done now, if you noticed, um, they've taken over the northern part straight up to the river. And one of their first jobs was, was to unblock this river that the Ukrainians had blocked. So th they have unblocked this river now. So there's there's going to be a river going straight into Crimea now without any blockage. And you can see one of the first most important things that the military had done was to secure this area around this river. And that was one of their first jobs. 
and you can see how important Crimea is to Russia and how important its residents are to Russia and how important it is to keep them happy because Crimea is a very very important uh, part of Russia now and that was one of their number one priorities that the army had and uh, they've done that now now you have a fresh um, fresh water going directly into Crimea and residents are super happy number six as of militants so one of the things Putin said before going into Ukraine and he made a speech and he said he's going to denazify Ukraine. So what did he mean what did he mean by denazify? So there's a group of group of militants called Azov militants and they're very um they go back to the Nazi days and even their symbol is very similar to the Nazi symbol and they seem to be a very racist bunch. Uh, they like to do a lot of ethnic cleansing and there's a lot of them around the Donetsk area uh, killing a lot of Donetsk people um, so this is why Russia wants to go in and try and get rid of these militants because they see these militants as a huge security issue alongside their border and um, this is why Putin wants to go in and he said he's going to denazify Ukraine because he wants to get rid of these um, very very racist um, Nazi era militants from Ukraine and um, this is one of his reasons he had to go in. Number seven Transmistria. So Transmistria is a very small section um, just next to Moldova which is a breakaway region of Moldova and they used to be Moldova but they want to be separate from Moldova and there's a lot of Russian um, peacekeepers along that alongside that area so what Russia wants to do now is go all the way to Transmistria and support those peacekeepers because those peacekeepers are very much isolated and they could be in danger if they not if if they do not have the support. So what um President Putin wants to do is get all of these east side because mostly it's the Russian speaking people along here. You've got the Donetsk and Luhansk areas as well. And I think what uh, Putin's going to do is going to go all the way um, to, to here. Uh, so he's going to cut off Ukraine from the Black Sea um, and, and this sea as well. And it's going to go all the way to support this uh, Transmistria area as well and, and there's a lot of uh, Russian um, peacekeepers there as well which uh, can help with the battle um, so it's very very important that uh, for Putin he takes over all of this area uh, for a number of reasons not only that but also uh, he has full control of all the gas fields along here as well um, so many many reasons why Putin wants to take over this area as well as the southern area as well so I believe he's going to leave the um, east I mean the west and and the Kiev part to Ukraine and pretty much split Ukraine in half so this is for a number of reasons as you know they want to keep um, Ukraine out the oil fields in the Black Sea and also they want to affect um, Ukraine's economy as well they don't want Ukraine to have access to the sea and also for security reasons because there's a couple of stories that UK and NATO members was building ports with um, Ukraine military ports and these could have been used in attacks on Russia uh, anytime in the future or in Crimea so this is one of the main, main reasons why Russia wanted to cut off Ukraine from the sea for economic reasons for military reasons and for security as well so I mentioned a couple of Black Sea ports which was jointly developed by the UK um, and also by Ukraine as well. Uh, what Russia is afraid of is Ukraine using these ports um, to ship in military equipment because uh, at the moment Russia is trying to demilitarize Ukraine as well so it doesn't want any sorts of danger alongside its borders so it's trying to get rid of as much um, weapons from Ukraine as possible because you have weapons going in or from all over Europe all the NATO countries are sending Ukraine stingers and all sorts of other anti-aircraft missiles anti-tank missiles so they're, they're going to be coming in through the ports they're going to be coming in through the borders through Poland for example so Russia is trying to make sure 
it blocks all of these ports uh, so nothing comes through the sea and once it does that it's going to start blocking some of the borders so no weapons come through Poland or other friendly countries into Ukraine so it's a big country and there's still a long way to go in this war number nine is weapons so um, again one of the speeches that Putin said he's gonna demilitarize Ukraine and it's going to denazify Ukraine those are his main objectives and so he's going to block off the Ukraine from the sea uh, he's going to try and block the ports and everything like that and he's going to also try and block all the borders and as you know you can see there's a lot of borders there there's huge huge borders to Moldova to Poland um, Belarus is fine because uh, Belarus is a friendly country to Russia so they're not worried about the border with Belarus it's mainly with Poland uh, Moldova and the other um, areas as well so once those borders are shut and um, the ports are shut Russia's gonna have to kind of go through the rest of Ukraine and try and get rid of all of these weapons so there's a lot of stingers out there and these stingers have already taken down a few helicopters so they're quite they're very very dangerous uh, they're top of the range um, coming you know from NATO and they're very very effective so Russia has got big job finding and destroying a lot of these weapons that the West has given Ukraine number 10 bioweapons and nuclear weapons so this is very important for Russia. They've been suspected that Ukraine has been developing lots of um, bioweapons with the US and NATO members and also been developing its own nuclear weapons as well. So in terms of nuclear weapons, uh, there was a recently um, Ukrainian minister who came out saying they've been enriching uranium to much higher uh, in, than what the IAEA recommended. And so they've been going with a much higher dose without anyone knowing. <coughs> <coughs> and regards to bio weapons, they found a lot of bio weapons labs all over Ukraine. And even though Russia has already taken over a small part of Ukraine, as you can see from the map, they have already found a quite a few bio labs as well. And they found a lot of evidence that the US had to do something with there. So they found a lot of US documents and things like that. So this is one of the things that Russia is saying is justified its invasion of Ukraine because of that, uh, because they cannot allow any nuclear weapons or bioweapons in their border. And again, I have to say that this is not independently verified, so I'm not sure whether this is correct or not. This is what Russia is saying. Um, so it's not independently verified, so you've got to take it with a pinch of salt. And that's it really those are my 10 main reasons uh, let me know if you guys think of any reasons or what you guys think of this war so far uh, let me know your thoughts and i'll look forward to reading your comments on the comment section take care for now and i'll see you in the next video